Now I have a written lecture about duality and I speak about it uh, in the PowerPoint because the Victorian era is full of paradoxes, hypocrisies, contradictions, dualities, whatever you want to call them. There is extremely multifaceted and if not multifaceted, at least, uh, you know, two-sided. We see this in the society. We see it in the way that children are treated. We see it in the way that women are treated. And we see it in great expectations in the way that the characters are portrayed. Now we have Pip. And Pip, again, is very, you know, insignificant at the beginning. And he's a very mistreated boy. He, he is abused. He's been brought up by his sister, Mrs. Joe. And by the way, Mrs. Joe gets her identity from her husband. We don't even find out what her name is throughout this whole book. She's always Mrs. Joe or Mrs. Joe Gargery. Uh, but at any rate, you know, Pip has been brought up by hand, and that is the back of the hand, by his older sister. And so he's meek and he's mild because he's been beaten into submission. But that doesn't mean that he does not have underneath, you know, the, the negativities. He has hate. He has the desire to hurt. But it can't manifest itself in Pip the boy. So how does it manifest? Number one, it manifests in Magwitch, the criminal. Now, I'm not going to give all the instances that connect them here because you can read the written lecture and you can look them up in the book. But Magwitch and Pip have a connection. And Pip steals from Magwitch. Now, Pip is already guilty. Pip has been made to feel guilty since he came to live with Mrs. Joe and understood, you know, what language is. He's guilty because his parents are dead. And because Mrs. Joe has to go to such great lengths to take care of him. But when he meets Magwitch, this guilt begins to multiply. He steals from Magwitch. Now he's bullied into doing that, but yet he does it. And uh, it makes him enter into a complicity or a deal with Magwitch. And he assumes Magwitch's guilt. And then later, when Magwitch is captured, Magwitch then assumes Pip's guilt. And he tells the uh, constable, uh, by the way, I stole some things from the blacksmith down there in the village. Now, of course, Magwitch didn't steal it. Or did he? If Pip and Magwitch are alter egos and two sides to the same coin, then they both did the stealing. Now that goes into psychological aspects. Um, you know, I understand that. But again, Dickens is doing the symbolic aspects. Now, Pip and Magwitch are one set of uh, uh, dualities, but Orlick and Pip are also the same, uh, the same coin, different sides. Now, Pip and Orlick's complicity is uh, not as mm, harmonious as Pip and Magwitch's because Pip later uh, comes to have great respect and even love for Magwitch, but he never does for Orlick. And so you wonder, how is Orlick Pip's alter ego? Well, it begins at the forge, and again, these details are in the written lecture, when Pip wants half a day off and Magwitch wants a half a day off too. Magwitch is saying, I am the same as this boy. You can't treat him better than I do. And uh, so they both get a, uh, you know, they both uh, get what it is that uh, uh, they want. And I'm not talking about the day off. Uh, Orlick does something that both Joe and especially Pip wants to do. He backtalks Mrs. Joe. And then later in the day, uh, Mrs. Joe, or at that night, Mrs. Joe is attacked, and she turns into an entirely different person. Instead of being this harridan, she actually becomes very nice, which is what Pip wanted all along. Orlick, whom we later find is responsible for um, Mrs. Joe's attack, brings about this change in Mrs. Joe. And Pip, who is already loaded with guilt, 
feels more guilt, even before he knows it's Orlick, because that's what he wanted all along. You know, he wished bad things on Mrs. Joe, but he was never going to do it. It takes Orlick, his dark, alter ego, to bring that out. More later.